Okay, for this video, I'm going to walk through making one of the worksheets in your book, and then we're going to use view base command to create the orthographic views in our layout space. To start out, you should have a template already created, so I'm going to open up the template we made last time that has our title block already set up for us. We also have all of our layers set up for us. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the top view of the object on page 57. Now, you should have already sketched this out by hand and figured out all of the X, Y coordinates for what you're going to be drawing before you actually get into CAD. Don't eyeball it. Get everything in there exactly because the next step is going to be adding dimensions. And if you drew it wrong, you'll have to completely redo the whole thing if your dimensions are off. I'm going to make an individual rectangle for each section that needs to be extruded. So I'll make a rectangle for the base. This is going to be 0, 0, enter 10, 10, so that that's just the whole base of the thing. My little magnifying glass can center that for me if I want, or just roll it around. Hopefully you're getting good at moving things. So I'm pushing on my rolling button to move something. Okay, the next rectangle I'm going to draw, REC, is 0, 0, 2, 1.75, 10. That's going to be the back of the thing going up. Enter pulls up that last command I had, and this time I'm going to go from 1.75, 0, to 10, 1.75, 0. Now, both sides are the same, so I can either use the mirror command or the copy command. I guess I'll just use the copy command. Copy, select objects, enter, and I'm grabbing the upper right-hand corner because that will let me snap it to this upper corner here. So here's my two sides that I'm going to extrude up. And then that last little piece in the middle, now it might be a little bit tricky to figure out what x, y coordinates that's going to be. So I'm actually going to make my rectangle over here at the origin and then move it into place. So REC, and this is going to go 0, 0, and I'll move it into place later. And it's going to be 2, comma 1.75. And then I'm going to say move and grab this little guy and with my snapping tools on I'm going to grab the base point as the center and I'm going to move it to the center right here. So it was a lot easier to move that into place than to figure out how to draw it in place. I'll do that again for my next rectangle. So this is going to be 0, 0, 3.25, 1.75 and again, I'm going to just move this into place. Select Object, Enter, grab the base point. If those snapping features are fighting you, just turn those off. So see how I can just snap that right into place? Oh, I didn't get into place, so I'll have to get that Move command up again. Select Object, Enter, Middle Point, and we want to make sure that he is snapped in to place correctly here. There, that's better. Okay, you can move around right in the middle of a command. So use your rolly button or push down and move around right in the middle of a command. So now we have the 2D top view. And from the top view, we're going to extrude this into three dimensions. So extrude. I'm going to start with the base, and I'm going to push the base down. Make sure that your extruding is a solid and not a surface. So I'm going to select solid. And to go down, I'm going to say negative 1.75. So that'll push him down. So there's the base. I'm going to extrude the back. So I'm going to grab that rectangle. This is why we made entire rectangles instead of just drawing a line over there. It just makes it super easy to extrude. Okay, so extrude. And we're grabbing that rectangle, enter, and this guy comes up 7. And then extrude one more piece, and that is this rectangle, and he comes up 4. 
The rest of this object I'm going to make with some wedges. So they're not rectangles, they are wedges. Come over here, find the wedge, and it's going to matter which order you select points in. The wedge likes to come up on the YZ plane, which is how we already have this set up, so that's good. But look at this, we're going to go from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner. And the third thing you do is tell it how high to go. Okay, so let's try this one out a little bit. We're going to be coming, so start up the wedge command, specify first, so lower left hand corner, upper right hand corner, and then the sides are going to come up, let's see, this was 3.25, so hopefully you have your notes in front of you so you can see all these dimensions. So there is one of those sides for the wedge. I'll hit enter, start the wedge command up again, again lower left hand corner, upper right hand corner, and we're coming up four this time. So there's the center wedge and the other side. We could copy this over, but let's just get some practice for the wedge command. So this was up 3.25. Okay, there's the side wedges, and one more for the top. So, again, lower left-hand corner, upper right-hand corner, and this one comes up 1.75. Now, right now, everything is in here as a separate chunk of solid, and we want just one piece. So I'm going to use Union. Union is the 3D version of Join. And I'm just going to highlight everything here, hit enter, and now we have one solid chunk instead of a bunch of solid chunks. So there we go, and we can change out from wireframe to one of these other views to see our three-dimensional object better. The lines that we originally drew are still in there. If you want to get rid of just the lines, remember if you select right or left to right it's only what's inside of that if you go right to left it's what it touches so we don't want to select our entire 3d object we just want to select those lines so I just selected the lines deleted that out of there we don't need those again and there is page 57 okay now we want to take this thing and put it onto our piece of paper so I'm going to start up the view base command and hit enter we're getting this out of model space now this little guy before you click him down look at all of the options you have in here we can change the orientation I drew it so that we already have the front orientation but if you had drawn it a different way and didn't want to rotate it in model space you could change the orientation here we can also change the scale here Okay, so right now the scale is set to 0.2. Maybe we want to make that just a little bit bigger. Okay, so I changed the scale. And is that going to be too big or too little? So you can keep going back and forth. Let's try 0.25. Is that better? Yeah, maybe 0.3 was good. So you can keep changing that scale around and kind of looking at him and how he's going to go on the page before you set it. And I'm going to go do my lower left view first. So click him in place, then hit enter, and click, click. Oh, he's too large. I'm going to show you a little trick for him. Actually, I'm not going to there. I'll just select those three views, and then for my 3D view, I'll show you a little trick. I'm going to start up that view base command again for model space, scale, and this time, yeah, let's try that 0.2 scale, and I'm going to put him down here off the piece of paper, enter, and now I have just a smaller 3D view that will fit in here. In fact, maybe we'll even make him a little bit smaller, so view base, model space, and scale, and I'm going to even pop them down even a little bit teenier. 
that 3D view, we're not actually adding dimensions to the 3D view, so he doesn't have to be too large. So I'm going to put him up here and then say enter. Okay, so now what do we have? We have some nice big orthographic views here, and you can move him around, make sure that they're nice and centered on your page. Give yourself lots of room to add dimensions. The next video here will do some dimensions, but isn't that nice? It creates all of your orthographic views for you. Another thing to notice on this, if I go back to my model space, and let's say I change something in my model space. Let's say I, I don't know, drill a hole in this, this guy. So where should we put a hole over here? I'm just going to put a random circle. Okay, so there's a hole, and I'm going to say press, pull, and select inside of it and push it through. Okay, so now there's a new feature in here. What is going to happen over here on my piece of paper? So if I switch over to my piece of paper, escape, get out of my press pull command, and you'll see that my orthographic views have automatically updated. So this is linked to what's happening over here in my model space. I can go back and forth, change around my model, and it will update my orthographic views. So pretty nice that it creates all those views for you. When they came out with this new feature, ViewBase, everybody was super excited when ViewBase came out. So enjoy it. We'll see you. The next video I'll do will be adding dimensions to this guy.